Glenlock Distillery's motto is stand apart. So let's see if their Madeira finished whiskey stands apart in this week's review. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt, I'm the Whiskey Nerd, and like I said, this week I'm looking at the Glenlock Madeira finished whiskey. So let me get it into the glass and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Now, Glendalough are a relatively new distillery in Ireland, like a lot of the distilleries in Ireland, and they've been working away making gins and vodkas and spirits and whiskies, but they are currently still sourcing their whiskey as their own stock is being produced and matured as they kind of age their own distillery up. So they've been producing some very nice, interesting whiskies from their distillery that they're kind of aiming to stand apart from other whiskies on the market by choosing kind of interesting finishes, different types of wood, different types of wine to kind of set themselves apart from other whiskies on the market. They're also using sourced stock because traditionally in Irish whiskey, you're gonna see a lot of bourbon cask maturation and sherry cask finishing, which is a winning formula, don't get me wrong. It does produce some very nice whiskies, but it does get a little samey over the years as you're trying a lot of the same kind of style whiskey that's been sourced from oftentimes the same distillery. So it is good to see a whiskey distillery like Glendalough trying something a little bit different. For this whiskey, they've taken a Madeira cask and used that to finish their whiskey. Now, Madeira is an interesting enough style of fortified wine. So it's a fortified Portuguese wine, which means it's been it's a wine that's been fortified by adding kind of neutral grain spirit or grape spirit, sorry, into the wine to kind of increase its length of life because the Portuguese would then put it on ships and send it, in some cases, down to the Madeira Islands down off the north coast of Africa. What happened was they sent down some wine, it wasn't all sold, and some of it came back to Portugal. And when they tried it, they found that the jostling around on the ships and the exposure to all that heat off the North African coast actually improved the wine a great deal. So they ended up trying to replicate the process and they sent a bunch of wine down to the Madeira Islands. And hence, nowadays we have the Madeira style of wine. In some modern Madeira wine production facilities, they will like artificially heat the wine. They'll try and replicate the conditions kind of with modern day technology, but in older style, what they call a uh, cantero or cantiero, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, uh, style production. They use the traditional methods where they leave the casks in the heat and let them kind of soak up all that subtropical warmth, which then concentrates the flavor of the wine in the barrel. So it's usually sweet. You can get some dry Madeira wines, but it's usually quite sweet. And that has given the whiskey a very nice kind of flavor because this is a grain whiskey and I'm Personally, on the record, I'm saying I love a well-made grain whiskey. I think a grain whiskey is a great base upon which you can build other flavors. So this was a bourbon aged uh, grain whiskey that was then finished in that Madeira wine cask, which I think has given it a lot of nice flavors. It's given a lot of kind of color as well to the whiskey. And I think it's come through quite well. This is a single cask whiskey as well, just to note. So this is the one that was produced for the Irish Whiskey Collection, which is the kind of name for the shop at Dublin Airport. But I have seen single cask versions of this whiskey up on other sites. So it's just, I've seen some in America, I've seen some on mainland Europe, I've seen some on in Ireland as well in regular bricks and mortar store, but it is a single cask. So just be aware, there will be maybe slight differences between the casks at different places, but this is my cask and I think it's come through quite well. Like I said, it's a single grain whiskey. They don't say it's a single grain whiskey on the bottle, but I've done a bit of research and it is a single grain whiskey. It does come in at 42%, which means it's gonna have a bit more weight than coming in at the standard kind of low 40%, but it's not gonna be at that kind of 46%, which I tend to like for craft whiskeys, but I think that's enough talking. I think we're gonna go in for the nose on the Glendalough Madeira cask finish. Okay, immediately, Coming out of the gas, I'm getting kind of white grape, that kind of light, fresh, fruity note. I'm also getting like some some red apple. You're not like that tart green apple, but like that red apple where you get that kind of sweetness, that appley, fresh sweetness coming through. There's plenty of kind of butterscotch, caramel sweetness, that kind of rich, thick, kind of sugary sweetness, and also like 
as I'm sniffing it, there's like a touch of oak, not a huge weight of oak, just a little bit of oak coming through there, maybe from that extra cask maturation, just like it's behind those other notes, you do get a little bit of oak. It is like a, a creamy base to the whiskey, like I said, it's a single grain whiskey and single grain whiskies do often have this kind of creamy, buttery base to the whiskey and that is there, but there's also a lot of fruity notes coming through, like um, like some dates, some like sultanas, those kind of dark, rich, sugary fruits, those are coming through there, probably from that wine cask influence. And yeah, just a little bit, not a huge amount, but a little bit of like um, baking spices. Now I was trying to pin down what the baking spices was when I was writing my notes for this, but it's just like a mix. It's not overly cinnamon, it's not overly nutmeg, it's not overly clove. It's just like a little kind of mix of those put together. Yeah, just like some light baking spices coming through. So I think that's enough talking about the nose. Let's go in for the palate. Cheers. It's got a relatively friendly approach. Like as it comes in, it's not hot. It's not like burning the tongue off you. It's not overly aggressive. It is still sweet. You get more of those baking spices. They're definitely much more apparent on the palate. As it spreads out, you get that kind of, that, that kind of caramel, butterscotch feeling again. But yeah, the baking spice is much more apparent up front, followed by that fruitiness. Like I'm getting, almost a little bit of like a like a black cherry on the palate. As I sip it, I get that kind of, like on the nose, much more stewed fruits, that those figs, those old tannas. On the palate, a little fresher, a little lighter, a little bit more like that kind of black cherry note that comes through. Also getting a little bit of oak, but I think I'm gonna go in for a second sip and see what else I can find. Cheers. Yeah, that oak spice is there. It's still like got that buttery, creamy base there but definitely got a lot more of that wine influence, that oak influence sitting on top of that base. Like as I'm breathing now in the finish, I can get that kind of buttery base. So it does kind of fade off. Those spicy notes do kind of fade off, but on the palate, as you kind of let it sit there, you get more of that wine influence coming through as you kind of enjoy it. It's not the heaviest or thickest of mouthfeels. I mean, at 42%, it's not gonna be a really rich honeyed mouthfeel. It's nice. It's there, it's just, it's not very heavy, so it's kind of a light mouthfeel, but I think we're gonna go in again and focus on the finish. Cheers. Yeah, so, as I was saying, up front, you get those spices, you get the oak, you get the caramel, butterscotch, you get the wine influence. After about two or three breaths, those generally kind of fade off. It does leave that wine cask influence as if I've just taken a sip of, a, uh, of wine we get those kind of tannins, that kind of oakiness coming through, but I'd say it's definitely on the medium to short to medium finish in terms of the majority of the notes. Like, as I'm breathing, I'm still getting those wine cast notes, but like I said, at 42%, you're not gonna get that really thick, lingering kind of finish. You're just gonna get some of the strongest notes, like the Madeira finish, that's gonna hang on the longest into the finish. I like this whiskey. I think, as I said, grain whiskey, I like grain whiskey. It's a good base to build other flavors onto. And I think this has done that quite well. The Madeira definitely is a bit different than those kind of standard edition releases you do see on the market. The Madeira cask influence, I think has come through quite well. Speaking of cask, like I said, this is a single cask release. So if you do see this on the stores, your version might be slightly better, but my cask number is RC 1075, so 1000, and 75 and it's bottle number 93 out of 500. Now I did notice a little bit of a mismatch so as you can see there's a little sticker there on it where it says there's no one of no more than 456 bottles drawn from a single cask yet on this label here it does say that there are 500 bottles in this single cask. Now I'm not sure if that's maybe just them giving themselves a bit of wiggle room so they can if it's 457 it can go up beyond that but there's a little bit of a wiggle room there. there's a little bit of a mismatch between the labels but this is at least going by the label cast number 1075 and bottle 93 out of 500 so if you like the sound of it if you're going through Dublin airport keep an eye out for it you might be able to find it if you like the sound of the whiskey in general keep an eye out for it you might find it in your local store and hopefully your cask tastes even better than mine because I do like this whiskey I put out whiskey reviews on Wednesdays I put out cocktail recipes on Friday featuring whiskey. So if you want to see those, 
make sure you scroll down hit that thumbs up button hit that subscribe button and while you're there leave me a comment to say what kind of whiskey i should review in future but until then i'm going to keep on enjoying this and i will see you next time Slancha.